everyone. So today I would like to explain about chapter 15, Teaching Vocabulary from the Practice of English Language Teaching by uh, Jeremy Harmer. So uh, let's get started. Introducing Vocabulary. In this section, we will look at the ways of introducing new vocabulary rather than practicing it. The activities may involve the students meeting words for the first time, even if they are ostensibly practiced. When teaching young learners, we want them to associate words and phrases with pictures and sounds. And then practicing vocabulary. In this example, the aim of the activity is either to have the students use words uh, that they more or less know, but which they need to be prompt into using, or to get them to think about uh, word meaning, especially in context. English has a lot of compound words. Students need to be exposed uh, to them in exercise to remind them of the ones they know and to introduce them to ones that are new. And then uh, vocabulary game. There are many games which are appropriate for use with collection of vocabulary items. Sometimes games which are not designed especially for language students work equally well in our lessons. This include Pictionary, uh, Call My Bluff, and three definitions for a word, uh, two false and one true, and then uh, characters. And in the example, uh, the games is designed to engage the students with a list of vocabulary items that will be used in the lesson sequence which follows. It doesn't involve any guessing or complex uh, mental processing. However, as a result of it, uh, the students see and listen intently to a range of words and have a good time doing it. And then uh, using dictionaries. Dictionaries come in many shapes and sizes. Uh, students can have them as apps on their mobile devices. They can access them online or have paper dictionaries in their classroom or homes. Uh, good learner dictionaries, whether they are mono, monolingual or bilingual, uh, explain the different meanings of words and how it is used and how it is pronounced, either using a phonemic symbol or over an audio clip of the word being spoken. The picture in this slide is an entry for research from the long one dictionary of contemporary English. And good dictionaries will also give collocation information such as verb collocation, adjective collocation, collocation with nouns and phrases. Also, as we, uh, we have said, some students are reluctant to use their dictionaries. Others want to share the meaning of words all the time. Students need to know when a dictionary use is appropriate and acceptable and we, when it is less useful or even undesirable, is, it is a good idea to talk to them about how, for example, it is worth trying to read a text for a guest before later, perhaps using dictionaries to check the meaning of words they, do not, they don't know. They also need to understand uh, that if they overuse dictionaries when they should be listening, they lose the benefit of hearing English spoken naturally and the opportunity this gives them to practice their listening skills. However, we as a teacher should also be sympathetic to the student's desire to understand every word, since most people speaking a foreign language often want to do this. And then uh, dictionary activities. The following activities are designed both to train students in how to use dictionaries and also to get them to use dictionaries as part of normal classroom work. The teacher need to tell them how useful dictionaries can be for language improvement, but this uh, will not be enough unless we also familiarize them with dictionary information and then include dictionary use as one of uh, our normal class, uh, classroom activities. The main aim of dictionary training is to make sure that the students know what is uh, in a dictionary and where to look for it. This is so uh, that they will have uh, feel comfortable accessing dictionary information and will therefore use dictionaries more often. And then keeping vocabulary notebook uh, and what is that? And cards. Okay, so many teachers suggest that uh, students should keep their own vocabulary notebooks 
where they record the words they need. Research is that they should write down the words and phrases they think uh, they want to remember. They should include definition of the words, example of the word in sentences, some of them taken from text and dictionaries, and some uh, that they have made up. They may also want to include other information, such as a part of speech, collocation information, other words in the same family, and perhaps a translation. And uh, Joshua Cohen, 2014, suggests that children should keep small cards. Uh, on the side, uh, they write the word in English. On the other side, they write the translation in the middle and a definition in the top uh, left-hand corner, collocation, pronunciation, and part, part of speech in the top right-hand corner. An, an example sentence is in the bottom left hand corner and perhaps in the bottom right hand corner and uh, they draw a picture to help them remember what it means. And then you can see the example of word cards from Bohen in fig uh, figure 13. Okay, so that's all about chapter 15. Uh, thank you for your attention and see you.